Hi, my name is Zakiron, and welcome to my vodcast, Dying for Significance. Why people will literally die for recognition and significance. Now, to smaller and uh, larger degrees, everyone wants to be significant somehow in their life. Most people dream of being significant and making a difference in the world or making their mark in the world and being remembered and making it into the history books. And this, of course, is the motivation for fame. Some people will almost literally die for significance, even kill for significance, while others run far away from significance and try to be as insignificant as possible. To be significant, one has to stick their head above the rest of the poppies and risk getting it cut off by the masses who are afraid of their significance, who are afraid of their power. This is the classic Aussie tall poppy syndrome. In Australia, where I live now, and let's face it, probably most countries to various degrees, anyone who does anything above or against or beyond the status quo is knocked off of their self-appointed uh, pedestal as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Whereas typically, you know, in the USA where I was born, you are a little bit, bit more encouraged to stick your head above and beyond all of the other poppies in the field. Hence the creation of the superstar actor and the athletes and singers and rock bands and now superstar business people, etc., which to a large degree is wholeheartedly encouraged in the USA, you know, generally, and, and now internationally even, because even if you are personally afraid of being significant and doing anything outside of the status quo, you still are admired, uh, <clears throat> you know, by people who desire significance and who, who respect people who achieve levels of success. And, and um, you know, you still admire those people who do achieve success. And most people have a love-hate, admiration, uh, envy, kind of relationship with anyone who is rich and successful. I mean, why we want them to succeed, especially if they do things that please us, make us happy, entertain us, etc. But at the same time, we want them to fail to bring them back down to our less lofty status. We want people to succeed, but we're also happy if they fail miserably or falter and it is revealed that they too have problems and are just humans just like us with relationship issues and money issues and self-worth issues etc we secretly want other people to fail because misery does love company and it is painful to see others seemingly succeed so immensely well and so easily and effortlessly while we struggle so much and have often failed to achieve our dreams of success so if you could get people past their fears of rejection and ridicule, most people would admit to having big dreams of significance and accomplishment and success and adventure and excitement and riches and fame, etc., etc. But most people won't admit it because it is too painful to talk about their dreams. It is painful for most people to talk about their dreams because they have practiced disbelieving their dreams so much. And it is always painful thinking about desires that you don't believe you can get. And it's painful thinking about dreams and desires that you attempted to achieve but failed to achieve for various reasons or were shot down in a blaze of, uh, of glory, uh, well, blaze of absence of glory. <laughs> that is the painful essence of regret. And we may fall into the classic blame pattern and blame all those people who didn't support us or who didn't give us a break or couldn't see our talent. But the fact of the matter is the only reason that, uh, the only fact of the matter, <clears throat> let me read and see that again. You know, we, we feel regret that people did, didn't see our talent or whatever, and we blame other people for our, you know, failure, etc. But the fact of the matter is the only person that made us fail was ourselves. We just didn't have the proper positive 
believe in our self mentality. We sabotaged our own success with stinking thinking. And that's not our fault because no one taught us how to believe in ourselves in the first place because we were surrounded by people who didn't believe in themselves, so they taught us not to believe in ourselves. Very few of us were taught to the principles of success and how to the law of attraction works and how to create a, what we want in our lives. So most people are really doomed to failure unless they can learn these success principles. <clears throat> and master their own vibration and master their own mind to create their dreams into physical reality. So regret is an unnecessary and self-sabotaging thought stream to practice. Personally, I don't think there is any feeling worse than regret and his cousin's shame and guilt. So I don't recommend indulging in this kind of bad feeling and ultimately self-sabotaging thinking because you can't change the past. You can only learn from it and create an amazing future. You can't create an amazing future regretting your past failures. One of the main reasons people have regrets is they imagine that there is some limited amount of time and a limited amount of opportunities or money uh, and support. And if you missed that one opportunity, that's it. That was your one shot at success. But that is completely and totally wrong. This is not a planet and universe of limitation. This is a universe of unlimited, infinite abundance. And it does not matter how many opportunities you have missed. There are always countless other opportunities available to you if you are open to allowing them to come to you and don't block that unlimited flow of abundance with your regret, shame, and guilt. You are a creator with countless never-ending dreams and desires, and the contrast of life ensures that you will always have never-ending dreams and desires and a never-ending flow of desires. And at the same time, if you can desire it, the universe is ready to help you achieve it, no matter what it is. If you will allow this unlimited support and not block it, with your old practice, limited thoughts of regret and shame and guilt and etc. The key is to become a master of focusing on the fullness of your dreams, the completion of your dream and the manifestation of your dream and the vibration of your dream and the emotional feeling of your dream rather than focusing on the absence of your dream. You've got to practice good feeling thoughts of being, doing and having what you want and therefore experiencing the wonderful emotions and feelings of being, doing, and having what you want. Even though what you want is not physically here yet. That is the essence of magic. Creating something from nothing but the thought of it. You don't have to gather ingredients from nature and put in henbane and eye of newt into a cauldron and say magic incantations and decrees to get what you want. Magic is a whole lot simpler than that. All you have to do is ask and then receive. All you have to do is desire and then allow the universe to give you what you want and all of your dreams will come true. At least initially, vibrationally, because you have way more dreams and desires than you have time to achieve. You have no limitation of time if you believe there is no limitation of time and you have no limitation of time as an immortal soul and you as source has no limitation of anything whatsoever and every single positive oriented desire you have your source instantly creates in vibrational reality so in a sense every single dream and desire that you have is instantly created for you you as source is instantly living that reality vibrationally so all of your dreams do literally instantly come true and you as a human then must decide which of those countless dreams and desires you wish to allow and manifest physically because you realistically can't manifest them all in this single lifetime 
and you got to surrender that fact. You, you, you've got to surrender to the fact that you can't physically create every single one of your dreams and desires, and it does not matter if you don't, because you don't need manifestations to prove your significance. And focus is your key. Which of your dreams and desires do you most want to see in the physical world? Not to prove your significance, but just for the fun of it. Because that is the real reason you are here. For the joy and the fun of and the adventure and the excitement of creation. Not to prove your worth by proving how awesome of a creator you are. So, who does anyone desire? desire to be significant? Why do people desire to become masters of acting or music or art or success or business or dance or sports or science, etc.? Why will some people risk rejection and risk failure and risk loss of income or failing completely financially and risk losing people they love by moving beyond their socially and economically uh, and even risk injury, uh, and even risk losing their lives for significance. Well, it's because the ride is worth it. Why do people jump out of planes risking the possibility that their parachute does not open, and they plummet to their death? It's because the ride is worth it. And the ride is about the feeling. We go on the roller coaster for the exciting feeling and, yes, even the excitement of the possibility of loss of life. The only reason anyone does anything is for the excitement and the exhilaration and the joy of it. That's why criminals do what they do and elite athletes do what they do and business entrepreneurs do what they do. Completely contrary to the 9 to 5 status quo. The only reason anyone does anything or wants anything is for the fun of it, for the excitement of it, for the joy of it of it, to feel significant, to feel worthy. The only reason anyone does anything or wants anything or strives to achieve something such as significance or riches or fame or success, etc., is to feel good and to feel better. The only reason anyone wants anything is to feel better. If a person feels helpless or powerless or unworthy or not good enough, etc., they desire to feel the opposite to feel powerful and in control of their lives, to feel better. They desire to have worth and receive recognition from others to feel significant, to feel good about themselves. So every single motivation that everyone has on planet Earth is to feel good and feel better and ultimately to feel happy and connected to source. But the main problem that people have is they don't typically go deep enough when it comes to their desires. For instance, a person may desire to achieve success as a musician or an actor or a filmmaker or athlete or business person, etc. Or they may just simply desire to be rich and have freedom and fame, etc. To feel significant, to feel worthy, to feel good enough, to feel like a winner, to feel successful, etc. But that's not deep enough. Why do they want those things is the real question. To feel good. To feel happy. To feel empowered. To feel good about themselves. That's why anybody wants anything. We see it all the time with celebrities that achieve great significance and fame and success and wealth, but they didn't get to the core of why they wanted that success, which was to feel good about themselves. And the trap is feeling good about yourself only because other people are admiring you and want to be around you and like you which never works long term because it's not real. You gotta feel good about yourself regardless of what other people think about you. That is the only road to true liberation and fulfillment. A trillion people may think you're the most amazing being in the entire universe, but unless you believe it yourself, then all the fame and success and recognition and riches are all meaningless. Now, we've seen that a thousand times as the rich, famous, successful actor or singer or musician or athlete or artist kills themselves unintentionally or even intentionally because all of that fame and fortune cannot mask their own inner feelings of insignificance and unworthiness and powerlessness and not good enough, etc., etc. You can try to hide your inner doubts and fears from society, but you can't hide and deny and repress them from yourself or from the universe 
for very long before they catch up with you and grab you by the short and curlies and all of that repression will literally kill you or sabotages your relationships or sabotages your success or at the very least sabotages your joy. But there is no conspiracy to make you fail. You are your own worst enemy unless you get your vibration right with good feeling thoughts and learn to love yourself regardless of whether anyone else loves you or likes you or not. That is also the essence of greed where a person is looking for significance to feel self-worth because of their financial success. Must, and that financial success must continually be, you know, they must continually be acquiring more and more and more wealth like a drug constantly giving them a new significant fix. But there's not enough money and success and fame in the world that can fill that inner hole of unworthiness and powerlessness and not good enough. Nothing physically can fill that hole because that hole doesn't even really exist. It is a lie. Feeling helpless and powerlessness and we're unworthy and not good enough and insignificant, etc. are all lies. They're not real. They're just ideas that humans came up with. Just beliefs that were sold to us, that we bought with our very souls, so to speak, because we were surrounded by people who also bought those same lies. The truth is, we are all completely 100% powerful and significant and priceless and perfect just how we are. And to believe otherwise is a complete fallacy and is a complete lie. Anything other than believing in your complete and utter awesomeness and amazingness and, and, and uh, infiniteness is completely bogus. So whatever you want, make sure you go deeper and ask why you want it. Why do you want the money and the honey or the significance or the success or the fame or the wealth or the freedom? If you go deep enough, it's because you just want to feel better. You just want to feel good. You want to feel empowered. You want to feel loved. You want to feel free. But if you go even deeper beyond that, you'll find the simple truth that you just want to be happy. You just want to feel good. You want the money and the honey and the love and the wealth and the freedom and the success to be happy. Now, let's be very clear here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with any desires that you have, no matter how big or how small the universe is source, etc., does not judge your desires. If you want to be the next tiddlywinks champion, the king of the world, travel to Mars, be a rock star, be utterly and completely rich, or just a simple gardener, regardless, source is 100% behind you and ready to help you create that in your life. But you got to be very clear about why you want what you want and why you want it, which is to be happy. But external conditions, which are your desires, can't be the source of your happiness. Otherwise, they're just your drug of choice, and you'll never, ever really be happy. No matter how much success and wealth and fame you achieve, you're never going to be happy. You've got to learn how to be happy and feel significant and feel powerful and feel famous and feel successful and feel creative and feel rich and free etc. Regardless, if you have anything in your life that physically proves those things that you want or not. Remember, significance does not come from other people. It comes from you. Other people cannot decide or prove your significance or your personal self-worth. Only you can. Only you can decide how awesome you are or not, because other people's perceptions of you are completely meaningless and unimportant, and there is no divine force of judgment that decides your worth and significance. That's a concept invented by humans who felt unworthy and insignificant, especially when they compared themselves to their ideals of God. The only people who feel unworthy and insignificant judge other people as being wrong or bad or sinful, etc. Only people feel unworthy 
who feel unworthy. Only people who feel unworthy judge other people to be unworthy. That's where prejudice and bigotry comes from. People who feel like shit judge other people as being shitty. And people who recognize and honor their own priceless self-worth that is not dependent upon anything will they think, say, do, and believe or uh, a need to prove. Well, those people are the masters of allowance who honor all beings as being equal and worthy and priceless and magnificent and divine regardless of what they think, believe, say, or do. Significance does not come from proving your worth or how talented you are or how smart you are or how sexy you are or how young you are or how enlightened you are or how rich you are because nothing needs to be proven to anyone. And proving your worth to others is fleeting because you only have worth in the eyes of others when you can make them happy and thrill them with something new and exciting. And there is always someone new who will come along and take the podium away from you. And if you need the podium to be happy, well, your happiness will last only five minutes or five months or five years. But then it will be gone as the worthiness judges give someone else the top score and you are left behind in oblivion. So the only kind of significance that is not fleeting and temporary is your own belief in your own priceless self-worth and massive, infinite, all-powerful, immortal, divine significance. That is the only real significance anyone can ever truly experience. And it is significance that just is. It's not dependent on conditions or anyone else. Your significance is not dependent upon any condition. It is unconditional significance. You are priceless and divine and amazing and awesome and magnificent and infinite and immortal and divine and all-powerful and, and completely 100% worthy, etc., regardless of what you do or don't do and regardless of what you accomplish or don't accomplish. You are priceless and magnificent regardless of what anyone else thinks about you. You are priceless and divine and magnificent regardless if anyone else in the universe even knows you exist. Significance is something you just are, not something you become or something you learn or something you earn. You are significant because you are source. You are God in a human body. You are significant because you are God, Goddess, all that is. You are creation. You, and God does not need to prove its significance to anyone. So you don't need to prove your godness to God. So go now and be the awesome, massively significant, priceless, immortal, immortal divine master that you truly are. And affirm your priceless significance every day until you actually believe it. And then it won't matter what anyone else on planet Earth thinks about you because you're always happy regardless. Because your happiness is not dependent upon what other people think, say, and do. And now you can truly, finally be free. And now you can have fun. Now life can be easy. And now your life can be prosperous because the universe gives <clears throat> in unlimited quantities anything and everything to everyone that allows those things to come to them. The unlimited flow of abundance is always flowing to everyone, but only those souls who allow it to flow to them without resistance experience this abundance physically in their lives. The unlimited flow of love and well-being and abundance is always flowing 100% to everyone, but when people try to prove that they deserve it, they block this unlimited, unconditional loving flow. So if you just surrender and allow yourself to receive this unlimited flow and love and well-being and abundance, you literally make all of your dreams come true because you feel the joy of their vibrational existence and you enjoy every step of the journey of creating this unlimited abundance into your physical reality. And now you experience true freedom and true unlimited power and your unlimited worthiness because now you're creating what you want just for the fun of it just for the adventure and excitement of creation. True freedom is creating for the joy of it because you can 
and because it is fun, because it is, it, is, it is your natural way of being as a creator of worlds, not to prove your worthiness or significance to some mythical judge who decides your fate. No one decides your fate but you. No one decides your significance but you. No one decides your worthiness but you. So go now and be significant. Be the awesome, unlimited, immortal, all-powerful, magnificent force of divine creation that you truly are regardless of what you have done or have not done and regardless of what anyone else in the universe thinks about you. That's why I like to call divine, it call it, I like to call it divine selfishness where your main focus is feeling good and feeling better knowing that it is not your job to make other people happy and knowing that it is impossible to make anyone else happy anyway and you only have control over your own mental, emotional and feeling state. And that again is true freedom and true power because your soul focus is on your own soul, S-O-U-L, not on everyone else and that freedom gives you unlimited power to literally create heaven on earth with the power of your divine influence to show others that they also have the same unlimited power to be happy and create whatever they want by focusing on their own happy feeling state and getting their nose out of everyone else's business. True freedom is knowing that you have no control over others and you don't want any control over others, but all you truly want is conscious control over your own happy feeling state. And that freedom leads to ultimate fulfillment and enlightenment and most of all joy and fun, which is all you want in the first place. So that's it. Go now and be awesome. Be amazing. Go now and delight in your awesome magnificence. Go now and revel in your unlimited significance. Go now and be awesome. Now, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you got it, if you if you did, and I know you did because it was freaking awesome. Bless your friends with these amazing teachings so that they know how awesome they are. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notifications and new videos, come visit me at zakyron.com for more self-empowering videos and podcasts and books and products and coaching and support to help you become a, an awesome creator of reality. My name is Zakyron and I help success-minded people create the happy, wealthy, fun, abundant state that they love and you love. Thanks again for watching this vodcast or listening to this podcast and I wish you immense joy and abundance. And, of course, lots of fun and adventure on your magnificent journey of divine creation. And, of course, remember to make life a holiday.